Hi, my name is Geert van Gielen and I would like to talk about the interpretation of experimental contemporary music. This video is part of a series which accompany the iBook Thoughts on the Recorder, which is available through my webshop kettenbergrecordings.be. You can find the link in the description and I've also included a clickable link at the end of this video if you want to learn more about it. From the 1950s onwards, composers started to really break free from tonality. All kinds of new techniques were introduced to create sounds. Colors became more important than melody, and everything was being questioned. Structure, the melody, the rhythm... All these presented serious challenges for the performer who had to treat their instrument totally different, on top of having to deal with a score that looked like nothing they had ever encountered before. As it turned out, every composer started to create his or her own language. Every language was in need of a specific notation which needed to be explained in every score over and over again with an accompanying instructions page. New symbols were invented in order to notate the outlandish sounds which sprouted from the composer's brain. This repertoire is often addressed as being avant-garde, but truth be told, avant-garde is actually a very specific genre within the greater experimental idiom. So whenever you are dealing with a new experimental score, you should give yourself plenty of time to learn the score technically. Please keep the next thing in mind. Never ever allow yourself to judge the composition until you fully have mastered it technically. So even if the music doesn't mean anything to you in the beginning, keep going with it. Just do your daily job of practicing without looking back. I would like to suggest to start with postmodern repertoire, since this repertoire intersects in a lot of ways with the music we are most familiar with. If you choose some music which, with which you already feel some connection, you will hit the ground running. From there on you can explore further into the unknown. I would like to refrain from listing all kinds of different experimental techniques, since all of these will be explained in the preface of every composition. Every composer also utilizes his or her own set of symbols, and some composers come up with specific techniques. Because of this, I don't think it would be very helpful. When you are still learning the score technically, it's important to be as strict as possible. A lot of this repertoire is notated very meticulously, with dynamic and articulation markings up to the zoo, in a way that it might feel there is no artistic freedom possible. This is not true in the end. Just remember that you are setting out the framework. It may be a very specific framework, but it's still just a framework. Once this framework is set out and mastered, it will be up to you to start imagining a possible storyline. Within the boundaries of the set out framework, you can now start to experiment and take rhythmic, melodic, dynamic and imaginative freedom wherever you feel this might make your story stronger. Ask yourself what character you start in. How does this feels like? What can you imagine? What is happening here? What are you saying? Once this is established, you can now start to bring in more details, just as you would with Baroque music. What's the character of the person? How does this person look like? In what setting is the story taking place? What details of the scenery can you describe? How is the story evolving? How are the characters evolving? Make sure that with everything you connect your feeling. Yes, create a whole opera in your mind. The more clear this is shaping up, the more clear your story will be passed on to your audience. Remember the words of C.P.E. Bach. As a performer, you must feel something first in order for your audience to feel something. To me, the great joy of playing this repertoire is the improvisational character, since there are no rules holding back the composer in any way. The same is true for the performer. You have no boundaries and you are completely free to experiment, to extrapolate, to exaggerate or to minimize, again, within the framework, in order to make this music your very own. All this without having to actually improvise. That's it for now. If you follow the link, you can watch the next video on how to interpret jazzy music. Thanks for watching.